All right, so we're back again with the E38 pretty soon. So what happened was I tried to drive it to work after all those repairs, and it didn't go so well for me. The throttle was not responding, and I had this check message right there. There was no SES light, but I had a check message that said, Engine Failsafe Program. So I'm going to see if it'll duplicate it, and then we're going to scan it. We're going to do the OBD2 scanner. And then we will also scan the little deal under the hood because it's probably not going to yield any codes. And then we're going to try a couple of things. First things first, we're going to do a mass airflow sensor cleaner and the throttle body and air intake cleaner. And then I'm probably going to... I think it might be a vacuum leak. So I'm going to show you what I think it is. And then I might also try just to make sure that those fuel injectors and spark plug... Uh, coils and everything's attached properly because remember we did have that random cylinder four misfire. So let's see if we can get that check code. Really? It's going to make a liar of me, huh? Oh no, we got a service engine soon. So we have check brake lights, check rear lights. We don't have the engine failsafe program. We do have a service engine soon light. Throttle's responsive. And we didn't have that startup rattle, which means so far so good. Our uh, AT205 and other things are doing okay. But we do have a service engine soon light, so. Let's start a scanning and get to the bottom of it, shall we? All right, so we're hooked up. Am I all status on? Yep, sure is. Bigger than shit, too, yo. All right. <clears throat> Diagnostic trouble codes in ECU 1. Readiness completed 4. Not completed is 4. So we could have more problems later. Not supported 2. Data stream supported 29 deals. Okay. Let's see what we got going on here. See what we got. Read codes. Current. So the frontal valve adaption spring test has failed. Apparently again. Because this is what we had last time in the last video. 1634. So... Let's the throttle adapter. I wonder if... So that's accurate and working. Initial timing, air intake temperature. It's about probably right. It says 61 degrees. It says it's 68 outside. It's pretty close, I assume. Now this is airflow rate in pounds per minute. I'm not sure what the metric equivalent of that is. Maybe grams or something per minute? And I'm not really sure what it should be. But I guess what I can do is just kind of slowly give it throttle. See if it has like a smooth climb. Which it does seem. So the airflow, mass airflow sensor seems to be okay. Absolute throttle position. I'm guessing if I floor this, it will probably say 100%. Which I don't want to floor it in park. Um, I would consider doing that if I was driving. Well, maybe I'll just do it quick. We'll see if it'll ever touch 100. Yes. Okay, so that works. So what the hell's the problem with this thing? Everything seems to be working. We'll do these. We'll do air flow rate. Absolute throttle position.
I'll be honest, red and black kind of look pretty similar on these pages to me. But I would assume that the flow rate and the throttle would be pretty close together anyways, right? I mean, the more the throttle opens, the more it's going to flow. All right, I think we've seen enough, I guess. Everything seems to be okay. Even though we know it's not because we got a freaking engine light, so. All right, well, we're going to clear it and see what happens, I guess. So now it's cleared. So if we go to read codes, it should say nothing. Vehicle is no fault codes. Okay. So we've moved outside from the inside. We're going to check... Everything going on from this guy, because I want to make sure that we don't have any. See, did you hear that? That clicking sound came from here. I think this is a spring check test. But I mentioned earlier what I think is happening, and, and I think down in here, underneath this big dude... I think maybe right in this little one. This little hose under this big one. That just made a noise too. My ass airflow did a hurt. Like click. Starts there. And then runs around a big gauntlet of stuff. So I don't I don't really know. But I suspect this little nipple down here is maybe what the problem is. Not this big one, but the one underneath of it. We're still scanning this thing. But that's what I think is the problem, because everything else here is tight. But what we're going to do is take this mass airflow off, we're going to clean it, and then we're going to have old girl stomp on my gas pedal and open up that butterfly, and then I'm going to scrub that out. And then I might take my electrical contact cleaner, I don't know, and just kind of give maybe some of these connections the uh, a little bit of a clean and call it a day. So I think everything else is okay. But it's just weird that I have these lights, so we're getting to the bottom of it now. This thing did make a liar. I'll try to start one more time and we'll see if that light's on. If not, I'll try it tomorrow morning. And I want to make sure that the light is on. We do have a little bit of it. Looks like I forgot to clamp this on this side. Oops. All right, so automatic scan is done. All right, so we have motor diesel electronics. Really? Huh. It's almost listed backwards, because I always check the other one that says not... But, I don't know, maybe, I gotta remember diesel's the one that this car is under, not the second one. Mm. So it only has six of these little module guys, huh? Probably for the best, the less fucking bullshit there is to break. See, they just clicked again. It's coming from there. And we know we have airbag codes. Three of them. Because we always do, until I pull that door panel off and see what's doing in there. We have uh, F0, internal control unit fault, side airbag front right, 06, 
power supply number 11. All right, so this is a dead end. Let's get to cleaning then. All right, so we scrubbed her up. She's nice and clean on the inside. And I do note that when you turn the key to the on position, this thing moves ever so slightly. So maybe that's that spring test that was failing. Maybe this thing was gummed up or something. I mean, I wiped it down. I noticed it starts moving better. So I don't know, maybe we just had a little, maybe we had some stickiness up in there. But here's what I think is the vacuum leak, if this is. So if you look at the bottom nipple there, see she's kind of broken up. So I'm gonna to try to plasty weld slash repair that. So that way my little bitty hose down there makes a nice solid connection. And then this thing, so I was busy that day, you saw all I ended up doing was electrical taping that that was split, but at my leisure I will order that because I also need a new brake booster hose. So I electrical taped that for now, but I noticed that was starting to crack, so we'll uh We'll get all these hoses ordered at once, and uh, we'll get this thing back together. And I think the only thing we really need to do now is, you know, some of these hoses that are rotted and the fuel filter, and then that we can start on the body work on this thing finally from when Jackass crashed into me. So we'll get this thing back together, and hopefully she will start running normally. Alrighty, and that's the final product here. I plasti welded it using a pick. Not this pick, but I used a straight one. I shoved down in there to kind of create the round part where it's metal and nothing bad could happen to it. Use a piece of sacrificial pl plastic and my soldering iron and went to work. So now we should be golden. You can see through there, shouldn't have any air leaks if in fact there was a vacuum leak. So, ready to rock, we're ready to get this thing back together, and then uh, we're good. I think uh, we won't have any problems. I'm not going to drive it to work tomorrow. What I will do is start it in the morning to make sure that code doesn't show up. And I'll start it again when I get home from work, and then if that's good, then on Wednesday my day off, I'll take it to the gas station to get some fuel since i got to mow this lawn anyway. So that's the game plan. Uh, that's my game plan, and for you, it'll be part of this video, so you'll know here in the future whether or not we got it solved in a matter of seconds for you. All right, last start of the night. The car's washed. It's been about, I don't know, however long, maybe an hour, maybe less. Oh, I guess it's good. Doesn't seem to exhibit any of the problems it did before. Well, that's good. So there you go. We fixed the mystery of the uh, engine failsafe program, even though I didn't get to actually show you guys that it said that. But trust me, it did. I didn't drive the car for about a week because of it. But everything seems to be okay now, so I'll go under the hood and kind of give you a synopsis of what I did, since I already did it and I can't actually show you in real time. And then the only other piece of advice I will offer is you could stick your finger on that throttle plate and move it without a, a person operating the gas pedal. I do not recommend you do that because it's one thing to do on the Corvette with a, uh, an actual throttle cable because you're not really hurting anything. These things are calibrated where the zero position is closed and then, you know, the 100% position is completely open. And if you start pressing on that without the pedal itself moving, you know, the pedal's not moving now, but this is, you might get this thing out of calibration and then you might have a really big problem on your hands that you don't want, you don't want to open that can of worms. So don't even do it. Don't even think about it. Some cars are like that. Some cars are not. And this car may not be like that, but 
I wasn't willing to risk it. You shouldn't risk it either. So that is how I fixed the diagnostic trouble code with the failure to pass the spring test on the throttle. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully it's educational. Hopefully it's not too boring. And hopefully this helps somebody. So thanks for watching, guys. Peace.